Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today we are going to take a look at stopping the A320. How do we do it? Uh, how do we do it in particular when we need to stop very quickly and why might that situation come about and what systems does the aircraft have to help us? This might sound obvious but there's quite a few different uh, little tricks that we use so hopefully uh, this video can teach you something new about uh, how we slow down the A320 uh, and of course in particular today we'll be in the A320neo but this will be applicable to whichever Airbus you're using in whichever simulator you are using as well. We're obviously in Microsoft Flight Simulator for this video today using the Fly-by-Wire A32NX mod however we'll also take a look at some other versions and as I said applicable to whichever Airbus simulation you happen to be using. We're going to start from Jersey for a particular reason. It has a short runway and we'll see why we might end up uh, needing to stop quite quickly. And we are going to be uh, testing out the takeoff performance for stopping as well as the landing stopping performance. As ever, I am a real world Airbus pilot, but none of this is for any real world use. It's just to give you some extra context on your home simulations. So hopefully it can teach you something uh, that you didn't know about the A320. Right, let's get started. Let's jump into the cockpit and uh, have a talk about it. So here we are on the flight deck, Jersey runway 08. Let's take a look at uh, the length of the runway. It's only 1,706 meters long, pretty short. If you scroll down here, you can actually see the takeoff run available from 08 from the full length, 1,706. But if we actually went for the taxiway delta, it's only 1,300 meters. So you wouldn't use delta in a commercial jetliner like the 320 at Jersey. There just isn't the room. So we have the full length available to us here, although as you can see, Microsoft Flight Simulator has actually spawned us slightly further down the runway than I would like to see. Uh, if I whiz the camera around, you can see that. There we go. So not ideal, um, but uh, yeah, might help illustrate our point. So if we go into our performance, we're obviously using flap three for this takeoff, and we've got our speeds V1, VR, and V2. So today, because of the short runway, uh, the V1 speed, the decision speed, where we can reject the takeoff below this speed on takeoff, is 115. Once we're above 115, we have to continue all the way up to 121 before we can rotate. If the engine fails after we are above 115, we have to continue the takeoff. There won't be enough runway to stop. I will talk about rejected takeoffs in another video at some point. Today, we're just looking at the systems we use to slow the airplane. But there's a brief description. So yeah, limiting runway, uh, a reduced V1, up to 115 knots, we can stop the takeoff. And let's see how we might achieve that. Well, first and most obviously, we have the auto brake system here. It's going to be armed at max for takeoff, and you can see takeoff uh, ECAM memo demands that auto brake max is done. If it's not on, it goes to blue. It's very important. It's a big part of the, uh, the takeoff flow. And what this system will do is if we bring those thrust levers to idle, then if, as long as we are above a certain speed, it will uh, apply the auto brakes. If we start, if we, sorry, if we reject the takeoff too slow, if we're at say 50 knots and we bring those thrust levers to idle um, or max reverse, the auto thrust will, sorry, the auto brake will not kick in and you'll have to do this decelerating yourself, which is why actually low speed rejected takeoffs can pose some significant challenges to pilots. Um, especially when you're not ready for it. So a high speed rejected takeoff when you're above that uh, threshold speed is somewhere in the, the 70 knots region, a bit higher than 70 knots. Um, if you then are above that speed and you bring those thrust levers to max reverse, it will automatically deploy the spoilers and activate the maximum auto brake. The, so the auto brake will take the biggest strain and take the most of the deceleration of the aeroplane. It is very effective. On a dry runway in particular, it takes a lot of the stopping power and it, it is the the biggest factor in slowing down the Airbus. Now there is obviously another factor which is going to be reverse thrust. If we look down here and just deploy those you will all be familiar with reverse thrust. There they are. They um, just simply mean that the engines uh, don't entirely reverse their thrust. What happens is you might be able to see it here. No it's not actually shown here. The outer area around the fan, the cold air, get sort of captured by these clamshells and then redirected out the sides and forward, which is what the reverse thrust is down. It's a hydraulic system and the air is blasted forward out of here. Um, the core air is still coming out the back of the engine. It, it's a bit of a um, compromise, but yeah, a lot of the thrust will be redirected out the front. Now, reverse thrust is great. We would deploy it, of course, if we have a rejected takeoff. It is most effective on contaminated or slippery runways where the wheels can't do their job properly. On a dry runway like this today, the wheels will take more of the strain than the reverse, but we still deploy it, of course, because it's another tool we've got. So we're going to use maximum reverse. Now reverse thrust has a problem. It is very upsetting for the engines to redirect all the air out the front. And as you slow down, for example, as we stopped here, 
that air gets blasted forwards and then it goes round and gets sucked back into the front of the engine. Two problems with that, it can pick up stones and dirt off the runway and push them into the front of the engine, which damages it. But also it provides turbulent air into the engines, not the, the smooth flow that they like. The result of that is that you could get compressor stalls and all sorts of other strange uh, phenomena with the engines. So you might hear a loud banging as the aircraft comes to a stop. Most commercial simulators uh, will actually simulate that. So as you're slowing down the last few uh, knots, if you still have maximum reverse, you'll hear loud banging. So it is, uh, yeah, it is a known known feature of using reverse thrust at low ground speeds, or I should say air speeds, I suppose. The final system I'm going to talk about now, then of course, is the ground spoilers we can deploy them now there they go and or see speed break up here they obviously deploy along the top of the wing now they are not uh, very useful at slowing the airplane down if you look at the front profile of the airplane they, they barely show up at all what they do very effectively is they dump the lift off the wing and then force the airplane down onto its wheels so that's what they're good at they're not so good at um, actually providing drag they, they they work by dumping lift mostly um, so at high speeds they do provide a lot of drag of course but uh, at takeoff speeds they're, they're not going to do a whole lot um, but they do disrupt the lift so they will deploy automatically as well provided certain criteria are met but to give you some context um, when we do a rejected takeoff we are looking for lots of things but the primary thing we look for is the um, fact that we're getting a, a strong deceleration which will be from the brakes and maximum re reverse thrust this screen here may not show the spoiler page so you won't even know if the spoilers are properly deployed it just doesn't matter as much as the other two features or uh, other two systems so those are pretty obvious uh, and what are we going to do if the auto brake doesn't engage as i mentioned earlier that's the next thing well we're going to stand on these pedals as hard as we can um, and we can do that because we have anti skid so just feet will go straight down on them it's for this reason in the 320 on takeoff that your heels will actually not be on the floor like in a lot of airliners and aircraft because this is rubber this is a rubber panel here so you can't slide your feet up these pedals you have to have them fully on the pedal it's just how airbus designed it it's an unusual design no doubt about it but yeah that is what you're going to have to do so your feet will be fully up on the pedal and then you can stand on those toe brakes um, and it's obviously the left pedal does the left brakes the right pedal does the right brakes and you'll come screeching to a halt and and yeah eventually on the wheel page you'll see these temperatures rise so what I want to do now is just uh, show you a rejected takeoff, just to, to show you the systems. The reason we stand on those brakes fully is because we have anti-skid working. The switch for that is up here. If you press it off, you get this message. Um, and if you have it on, uh, it should look normal. So anti-skid needs to be on. That means that when we stand as hard as we can on the pedals, the brakes, even if they would lock up, they will then release the brake pressure just enough. So you get the most deceleration by standing on the brakes, fully depressed, and the anti-skid then takes the strain. If the wheels lock up, which is the risk, then the anti-skid automatically releases them just enough, and it's a very good system, and that's how you slow down the Airbus. It's the best performance you can get. If your anti-skid isn't working, um, that's more of a landing scenario. For takeoff, you want your anti-skid to be working, uh, and we'll talk about what this max brake pressure system means. Okay. So let's run through a takeoff then. So I'm going to stabilize the engines at 50%, start the timer, and half stick forward. Engines are stable, release the brakes, and we're going for a toga thrust takeoff. So there's Mantoga SRS, all the thrust is blue and armed. I love having the shadow in front of me like this, really great. As we get through 80 knots then, I can bring that side stick to neutral, and now the uh, rejected systems should work, so the auto brakes. So let's go stop. We go match and reverse, those are deployed. The spoilers come up down here, you can see, and we get the deceleration, that line going down as the trend. You also get the decel light on the auto brakes. As I go through 70 knots, I'm gonna bring the thrust reversers to idle because I want them to uh, slow down and not be sucking in all that air. And you can see what's happened. I haven't actually touched the brakes. The auto brake stopped us, and it would in the real aircraft. Ideally, however, I would take over with maximum manual braking like I've just done and use that to bring the airplane to a stop. Now I stopped, I'm going to set the parking brake and make sure I've got forward idle on the engines. So you can see how quickly it happens and how effective the airplane is at stopping. So the only system I had to use there was bringing those thrust reverses straight to maximum reverse. But there is a reason we did that um, and it worked because we were going fast enough. A low speed one, it might not look the same. Right, for this takeoff, I'm going to reject it at a lower speed, and I'm imagining, I'm not sure if it works in the fly-by-wire yet, that the um, the auto uh, brakes will not kick in at maximum reverse. So hold it on the toe brakes, release the parking brake. I'm going to start the clock, set 50% N1, and let's give it a go. 
So there's 50%. Oh, those brakes aren't really doing a whole lot. There we go. <laughs> Half stick forward. Right, release that toga thrust. Man toga SRS. Auto thrust is blue and armed. And away we go. And now let's say we have an engine problem or some sort of failure here. If I go max reverse and put it out, you can see that the reverser engages, but the deceleration is nowhere near as pronounced. We've got maximum reverse, no ground spoilers, and uh, we're just rolling along. So I've got to stand on those brakes myself, fully down, anti-skid takes the strain, brings us to a halt below 70 knots, get the reversers to idle. Now there are policies for if the auto brakes, oh, sorry, if the anti-skid system fails or the brakes fail, there is a way to swap it over. That again will be saved for another video. But there we go, that's bring, brought us screeching to a halt, but a slightly different method um, because we have to take over ourselves from that low speed reject. So that was quite a low speed rejected takeoff. You can see those brakes have taken most of that energy. The temperature's soaring up now. They would get really quite hot. Um, we're not too heavy at 60 tons. It's a reasonable takeoff weight, but it's not too heavy. Um, and the temperature here is pretty cool outside, 10 degrees Celsius. So they're going to heat up. The wind is the best thing to cool down the brakes. But of course, we also have brake fans. Uh, I would probably put those on in this case because this temperature will continue to arise for a few minutes um, until it reaches a probably a very high peak and you could even see that the the tires deflate again these are some things for a video about specifically rejected takeoffs i suppose right let's move on to the landing uh, stopping so we are now downwind for our approach into jersey runway 08 you can just see oh sorry we're on uh, crosswind actually we're going to turn downwind momentarily and there is the airport we're going to go and land on so let's talk a bit about how we're going to slow ourselves down on a landing on such a short runway and what is the quickest way to slow down the 320 just to recap the takeoff, we found that the brakes took most of the strain, especially on a dry runway, but we also have the thrust reversers and the spoilers. The auto brake system is available, however, will not work if you reject from a low speed takeoff. Likewise, the spoilers are not as relevant as the uh, thrust reversers and the braking. We can go maximum deflection on the brake pedals, so we can push those brake pedals all the way down assuming that the anti-skid is working and we have not had a loss of braking, which we'll talk about in future videos. The reverse thrust can be used all the way down to 70 knots at maximum reverse. It can be used down to a stop as well. If you're worried about the distance, if you think you may go off the end of the runway, then you can continue to use the reverse all the way to a stop. It may damage the engines, but that's better than going off the end. However, if everything's looking reasonable and we think we're going to stop in time, then we'll simply put the reverse thrust to idle as we go through 70 knots uh, or as we slow down to a stop. We can take over from the auto brake by standing on the brake pedals ourselves to help bring the airplane to a stop under our control. So for landing, it won't surprise you then, um, just as we turn downwind, Jersey's just behind us over there, it won't surprise you that it's a very similar process. So I'm going to bring that uh, nose round, I'm going to put out flaps two just to slow us down. Um, it will not surprise you that it's very similar. So we have the auto brake system, but now we can't use low or medium. On takeoff we always set max, but you can see that they're divided low, medium, max. So we're going to go for either low or medium, and of course today with a short runway, medium is far more effective at slowing the aircraft quickly. There are three brake options for landing, but the third option is not max here, it is actually maximum manual braking. So our landing performance will be calculated assuming that we either do low auto brake, medium auto brake or maximum manual. Those are the three options, not maximum auto brake. So medium auto brake is quite effective. It will apply the brakes fairly shortly after touchdown and for quite a high deceleration rate. Low auto brake is less effective. It applies less deceleration rate and it also does it later after touchdown. There is a longer gap. The reason that's useful is if you've landed flap three or you have a high nose attitude, but you don't want to land and have the brakes kick in too quickly because the nose will come crashing down and it could damage the nose wheel. So on a long runway, if you're using flap three or something like that, then low auto brake is really nice. It's much more comfortable for the passengers, but somewhere like Jersey, medium auto brake will be required and it's possible maximum manual will be required. Maximum manual braking is the highest level of braking we have for landing. And it is simply a case of we apply after nose gear touches down, full pedal deflection, same as we did on the rejected takeoff if we needed to. Now, the trick is do not apply maximum pedal deflection until the nose wheel is down. If you do it early, you'll have a very difficult time controlling that nose gear and you could damage it. So 
here is the sequence for a uh, short field landing effectively. We'll use flat full of course for landing because it's going to give us the uh, most drag and the lowest approach speed. We're going to touch down with the main wheels. We don't want to float the landing, we just want to get it safely touched down in the right place. As soon as the main wheel touches down, we deploy maximum reverse straight away. Again, on a dry runway, maximum reverse will not take much of the strain. On a wet or slippery runway, when the wheels don't work as well, it will take more of the pressure. But we're talking about short runways today, where we wouldn't realistically be landing if it was slippery or snowy. So we're going to put uh, the maximum reverse out anyway, because it is effective to a point, it will help us. So main gear touches down, maximum reverse selected immediately, and then as soon as the nose gear touches down, which we will not delay, we will derotate at a fairly normal rate, get the nose wheel down, and then stand on those pedals all the way down, keeping it straight with our feet. Again, the same thing, we have to have our feet up on the pedals for landing in the 320. In a crosswind in particular, you would find it very difficult to control the brakes whilst you have move your feet up, because you have to take them off the pedals to move them up. You can't slide them on this rubber surface. So that is the sequence. We land, maximum reverse with the main gear, nose gear down, maximum on the pedals. That is the quickest way to stop it. I'm going to leave medium auto brake set just as a backup, um, but I will point out now that there are some times where the performance requires you to use maximum manual braking and the medium auto brake is not enough. But even in those cases, I would always select medium. Um, and this is not a rule, this is just my preference. I would have medium set here as a backup in case uh, of any other any reason or delay for setting the uh, setting the, the manual braking. Let's briefly talk about the landing distance available and why we're doing this. Jersey runway, as you can see, is uh, fairly short, as we said, 1706 meters. But you'll notice that actually the landing thresholds are not at the edge of the runway, so we do not have 1706 meters to land on. We actually have to land, if we look down here on runway 08, we have, we have a total distance of 1,654 meters. We take the landing beyond the threshold number because we are already counting for the fact that we are going to be flying over the threshold at a certain altitude. That is because of this indent. We get to use this part of the runway because we're going to land past the threshold here and then we can stop on this part of the runway, so we get to use all of that. You'll see that the indent is slightly worse on 2.6, um, so we have to land past this indent here but we can stop all the way up to there. So 2.6 is slightly shorter even at 1,554 meters. And that 100 meters could make a difference to whether you could actually fit or not. Again, this would be very carefully calculated by your pilots before flying it, of course. At this point, I'd like to point out that there is a significant safety factor applied to all of the takeoff and landing performance. So not only do we know that we fit, we also fit with factor applied. So if we, for example, know we need 1,200 meters to land, then we will add a percentage onto that to make sure that we have the safety margin to stop as well. So there is a lot of uh, safety factor built into this. So we don't ever land worrying about the landing distance because we know we have the safety factor and we will only land at runways where we have safely calculated the performance, taking into account the tailwind, headwind, conditions of the runway and so on. So it is a very carefully planned process. So here we are on final approach now into Jersey, fully configured. Uh, and let me just make sure those cabin is secure. Um, so what are we going to use? As we said, we've got medium auto brake, which is the most applicable here. Full flap for landing to reduce the speed on final approach. We're going to land the main wheels and put out maximum reverse and then get that nose wheel down at a sensible rate. And then as soon as the nose wheel's on the ground, I'm going to stand on those toe brakes. The medium auto brake is just there as a backup. I'm not sure why, maybe it's forward it needs. There we go. Um, yeah, so that is the plan. The ground spoilers will deploy, but they are simply going to be providing a bit of extra weight on those wheels. They are not going to do much of the slowing down, but they do dump the lift off the wings quickly and enable us to uh, get those brakes into action. I'd expect to see the brake temperatures rise, but it'll take a few minutes after the landing for that to happen. Um, so we'll leave that there. Uh, actually, normally by now the wheel page would show up automatically, so we can leave that one there. Right, then let's give it a go. Obviously, short runway. So when you're landing in airports like this, you need to make sure that you land well within the touchdown zone, which is marked up by these white markers. But when they're really short runways, you might find your airline has a different policy. For example, maybe you need to land by one set of markers before the end or something like that. Uh, it will depend. We have a bit of a inset threshold here, but not too much. So it's not going to make too much difference. And we can stop all the way up to the red lights up at the other end. Here we go, then coming in over the ridge at Jersey. All the pilots coming off. Let's uh, give it a go, and we're going to do exactly as we said to get the best stopping performance we can. A bit of mechanical turbulence coming over those hills there, as you'd expect. One hundred. Keep it descending. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. 
Into the flare. Idle thrust levers. Main gears down. Max reverse. Let the nose wheel come down. And now stand on those toe brakes and hold those down. We're going to keep max reverse. Once I know we're stopping safely. There we go. We're definitely stopping on the runway. 70 knots reverse can therefore come to idle. Holding on those toe brakes. And look at that. We've even made the intersection. So releasing those brakes there. I absolutely love the shadow effect. <laughs> look at that. Absolutely brilliant. One of my favorite things. Now, when we're at taxi speed, I can bring those reverses back to forward idle. So there we go. And as we taxi clear, we can bring in the spoilers. You'll get to see this in the shadow. Absolutely love that. There they go. And we'll bring in those flaps. Um, yeah, so there we go. It is uh, quite simple. And look at that. We even made the intersection. And I can tell you the performance in a, you know, a 60 ton 320 into Jersey is not the, the biggest in the world. So, uh, yeah, it is an amazingly effective way to... Uh, to slow down the aircraft using max manual braking it is not something we do very often but sometimes the performance might require it Finally then I'd like to show you what can happen if we lose some of the functionality of the aircraft. So today what we'll do is we'll imagine we've had a loss of the normal braking system. Now there's a few ways this could happen. You could have problems with the uh, the hydraulics that power them. Um, uh, you could have issues with the anti-skid system. For whatever reason if we have this switch off you can see the anti-skid and nose wheel steering are off. So we've lost both the nose wheel steering and our anti-skid system. So it says max brake pressure 1000 psi. Now that is actually shown on this little display here. The green band you can see there goes up to 1000. That is 1000 psi. So on landing, when I squeeze those brake pedals, these needles should come up and go to a maximum of the one for 1000 psi. Now in older Airbuses, you actually had to, and you'll see also auto brake doesn't work. Great to see this modeled nicely by the fly-by-wire team. Yeah, that's good. Um, but yeah, great to see that. Um, but this in the older aircraft, would mean that the pilot monitoring would actually call out the PSI and let the pilot flying know because they'll be busy looking out the runway keeping the airplane um, straight. So it is, uh, yeah, it is a bit of a difficult challenge to try and make sure you get all of that right. Now these days in the NEO, it's not actually the same. In the NEO aircraft, you can, this is a modified usually alternate brake system that actually means that you don't need to do that. What will happen in this aircraft is if I stand on the brakes, it will limit it to 1000 PSI, but we get a lot less braking as a result because we can't use as much pressure. But at 1000 PSI, we should avoid the wheels locking up and therefore that would be the worst case scenario. If the wheels lock, then you'll slide and then sliding, you'll have absolutely atrocious performance and be very at risk of uh, finding yourself too far down the runway. So let's go and just uh, take a quick look at the landing. I'm curious to see whether these needles will move. So I'm expecting them to move uh, in this case because I've by turning this off uh, should be on the, al the alternate braking system effectively. So we should see the pressure shown on that display. So here we are now in X-Plane 11 and we are using the TOLIS A321. Now this is a very in-depth simulation, a very mature product that has a lot of systems and importantly malfunctions modeled with it. So that is going to be perfect for what I want to show you now. As we saw, the uh, alternate braking system isn't modeled uh, quite the same in the uh, fly-by-wire Neo just yet. So we're going to use this. Now this, I'm not sure if this is going to have the alternate brakes modified or not, but either way, if we jump into the cockpit and I release us, we are now on final approach into a London Heathrow, and I've done the same thing. I've turned off the anti-skid nose wheel steering, so the auto brake is not available, and we are now, if I squeeze the pedals with the gear down, you can see these needles move. That is because they are applying the brake pressure through the alternate system, and even if I go maximum brakes, you see they limit themselves to a 1,000 PSI, so that means that this is actually the modified alternate brakes. This is the more modern version, even though it isn't a Neo. 
Uh, it doesn't have to be a Neo to have that system. Like I say, the old aircraft, if I squeeze the brakes like that, the really old ones, these needles would just shoot up and uh, yeah, you'd be over the pressure limit. And the risk there is you'll lock up a tire and it will slide or worse, uh, it could burst. So max landing pressure, uh, max pressure, 1000 PSI landing distance procedure applied. We've lost our anti-skid, nose wheel steering, normal brakes and the auto brake system. So here we go then. Let's go for our landing. Uh, I'm going to take out the autopilots and we'll run for a, uh, a normal landing. So hopefully you can see that. So I know it's a long runway here, so we'd have no issue landing in this uh, configuration. But what we'll do is we will go for um, the same sort of idea, just in the 321, exactly the same. So very important now that we watch those reverses go to green. They are going to be really crucial because our brakes aren't going to be as effective as before. 10, will touch down, maximum reverse, very important. They'll go amber as they start transitioning and then they'll go to green. And now I'm going to stand on those brake pedals and just check that I get a thousand PSI. Now, as I say, you can't stand on the pedals in all situations, but there we go. And as you can see, very effective. We're already back through 70 knots, bringing the reverses to idle. But that's what this gauge is here for. You're most familiar probably seeing it used for the parking brakes. So if I turn back on the nose wheel steering system and set the parking brake, it shows us the pressure there because the parking brake is supplied through the other hydraulic system. So to recap today's video, if we need to stop the aircraft as quickly as possible on a takeoff, we're going to bring the reverse thrust levers straight back to maximum reverse. Then we're going to make sure that that works and we're going to stand on the brakes fully or make sure that the uh, auto brakes go for maximum braking. On landing, it's slightly different. On landing, if we need to stop as quickly as possible, we'll do a flat full landing. We'll land the main wheels and immediately select maximum reverse thrust. We'll let the nose wheel derotate it's called as the nose wheel comes down to the runway like normal but as soon as the nose wheel's down we can then apply maximum manual braking we need to make sure that the brakes are working normally if we have uh, any issues with the brake system that could become difficult and we may have reduced braking the important thing is we don't want the wheels to lock up and uh, slide along the runway but the anti-skid system normally takes care of that so in a fully serviceable airplane you can just stand fully on the pedals as we decelerate through 70 knots, if we know we're going to stop on the runway, then we'll reduce that reverse thrust to idle reverse because we don't want to damage the engines. On the takeoff as well, we will, uh, if we're rejecting the takeoff, bring the reverse to idle when we know we can stop safely on the runway to avoid additional damage to the engine. And then once stopped, forward idle. After landing, we'll bring the reverse from reverse idle to forward idle as we reach our taxi speed. So that is all for today's video. I hope it's been uh, interesting for you. Just a few little bits of information about how we stop the Airbus when we re really need to on these shorter performance limited runways uh, during takeoff and landing. There'll be plenty more videos and guides to come on the channel with regards to the Airbus as well as other airliners that we now stream and plenty of live streams to come as well. So do please subscribe if you'd like to see more of this content. Otherwise, do keep safe and well and we'll see you again in another video soon. Thank you. Bye bye.